I have the pleasure and the privilege of serving as this city's police chief. But tonight I'm going to talk to you less about law enforcement and more about a predicament. And the predicament that we're in is a kindness crisis. Suffice it to say that we all bear witness every single day to increased levels of incivility. The good news, though, I have an app for that. <laughs> you don't need a device for this app. I built this app in my heart and in my soul. But before I unveil it, I have to give you a little texture, a little background, so that you can understand the origins of this app. I grew up in the D, y'all. Detroit, Michigan, when some people considered it the murder capital of the world. Behind that pristine skyline right there, there was some mayhem. There was some chaos. Everything on the criminal spectrum we had, murder, drug dealing, prostitution, gangs, you name it, we had it. Ironically, though, I never felt unsafe. Growing up in that environment, and it took me a long time to figure out why. And the reason I never felt unsafe was because of the environment that was cultivated and nurtured by all of the adults I was surrounded by. <clears throat> Teachers, coaches, counselors, neighbors. I was surrounded by people helping other people all the time. And it's easy to emulate what you're surrounded by. But for me, it started at home. I can remember one night, I was about eight or nine years old, and it was late, past my bedtime, and a friend of my mother's came over. She had a small child in tow. And clearly, this woman had just been through a traumatic experience. She was in distress. This story does have a happy ending, but I could tell she was in distress. I could see the bruises on her arms. I could see the bruises on her face. She had on dark glasses, even though it was after dark. And the reason I know this, and I can tell you this, is because I was in the hallway, peeking around the doorway, ear hustling. <laughs> and before you grab for your ghetto thesaurus, allow me to translate. <laughs> I was eavesdropping. But what I heard became transformational for me and then later a force multiplier. What I heard and saw was my mother keeping care of that woman. What I heard and saw was my mother making sure that that woman got to where she needed to be. What I heard and saw was my mother showing her compassion. And I know that when they parted company, she was in a much better place. And years and years later, as I've gotten older and, and, and hopefully wiser, it becomes clearer and clearer to me why service to others is so important. It is paramount for me. Years and years after I, I witnessed that incident I just described, I read a quote from Booker T. Washington. And the quote was simply, if you want to lift up yourself, lift up someone else. And I had a eureka moment because I thought, man, he just put my mom's deeds into words. And when he did that, the blueprint for my app was born. I give you the kindness quotient. It is made up of five values that are very important to me. And feel free to appropriate any of them that you wish. There's no propriety on them. Or make up your own. Number one, my love for humanity. Because it reminds me to be patient with human beings because we're all a work in progress. Number two. Self-definition, because it sustains my convictions. Number three, pride in my heritage, because it reminds me that I am standing on the shoulders of others. 
others who have sacrificed far more than I will ever have to. Number four is gratitude because it reminds me every morning that each day is a gift. That's why it's called the present. And number five, humility, because it reminds me that I'm no better than any person, but as good as every person. And so what does that look like when applied? So I'm in a grocery store, and the guy in front of me is jazzed. He is hyped, I mean in a good way. He's talking about a birthday party for his nine-year-old daughter. And he's got all the trimmings. He's got the cake. He's got the party favors. He's got everything that would make any nine-year-old's birthday party the place to be. And he hands the cashier his card. And it comes back denied. And he handed it to her again and asked her, would you please run it again? And she did. And instead of getting that high-pitched tone of approval, he got that baritone buzzer of denial. And all at once, his body language changed. His shoulders began to slump. His tears I welled up in his eyes, and on his face I could see all at the same time shame, embarrassment, rejection, dejection. And so I handed the cashier my card, and she looked at me, and he looked at me. Are you sure? Absolutely. Run it. And I didn't do that for praise. I didn't do that for pats on the back. My kindness quotient kicked in. There's no way I could have gone home and passed the mirror test knowing that that man had to go home and explain to a nine-year-old that there would be no party. And I was able to help him. And so here's how that has come back. And it has many times over. I started my shift one day. Yep, get your yucks on. I started my shift one day, horribly, the double homicide, and all day, 12 hours later, I'm finally on my way home. And the day had been so horrible, and as was my custom when I was having a bad day, I stopped at the bakery. And I got a Texas hubcap, and it is as advertised, trust me, it is a donut as big as a hubcap. And yes, I'm a police officer and knew I am not ashamed to eat pastry in public in uniform. <laughs> so I'm walking out, and, and, and a lady's walking in with two little kids, a boy and a girl. They're about eight and nine years old. And, and the day had been so awful, I wanted to just go by them. But that's not my way, so I didn't. So I stopped got down on one knee, got down to eye level, just like they teach us in police school, right? So you're not towering over them. And we talked for a minute, and then I flung the doors open on the squad car, and it was their own personal jungle gym. <laughs> they had lights on, sirens blaring, five o'clock in the morning. And when they were done, I handed them some baseball cards and some stickers and some candy, and off they went. Never saw those two again. 10 years later, I get a tap on my shoulder. I'm at the county fair. Beautiful, sun-drenched August day. And I turn around, and there's a young man and a young woman, about 18, 19 years old, and they proceeded to tell me the story that I just told you. And they finished it by saying, that was the coolest thing that ever happened to us. And it reaffirmed why I got in this profession. I would rather leave an impression than an impact. Impact is a little too aggressive for my liking. So, what does your kindness quotient look like? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> In order to find that out, you're going to have to do something. What you're going to have to do is go out and be used. And I know that's counterintuitive because we're conditioned to believe and interpret being used negatively. But the truth of the matter is, if you're not being used, you're not being useful. The key is not to be misused. So go out. 
Make time for somebody who's interested in your profession. Pay for that cup of coffee for the person in front of you. Volunteer. Sponsor a family at Christmas time or during the school year when things are, are, are tight for people with limited resources. What, whatever motivates you. And if you're already doing some of those kinds of things, I invite you to double down. If you're not, I invite you to give it a try. Because nobody I ever heard of achieved anything without help from somebody. Nobody I ever heard of achieved anything without help from somebody. Need another reason? None of us can help everybody, and I'm aware of that, but any of us can help somebody. We're so polarized nowadays, and we're so conditioned to be polarized that we let those things interfere with spreading our joy dust around. Don't let it interfere. Go out and spread your joy dust around all over the place. Need another reason? These, none of these still don't light your fire. Try this one. I'm confident when I say we would all rather live in happiness, connectedness, and peace rather than tension, isolation, and fear. I know I certainly would. I would prefer the former over the latter. And so as I close, I want to share a quote I heard at a conference here in St. Cloud some years ago. Something one of the speakers said resonated with me. No, it reverberated through me. And what he said was, you can't lead people if you don't love people. And you can't save people if you don't serve people. So as we part company tonight and continue along our journey that we call life, I want you to remember something and I want you to do something. I want you to remember that service to others like laughter is good for the soul. So laugh every day, even if it's at yourself. And remember to help somebody. And by doing so, together, one deed at a time, we can overcome the kindness crisis. Thank you very much. Good night. God bless you.